as a result of a contract win where we, they came in and s told us we had uh, 60 days to facilitate two, facilitate two remote sites and it was 60 days starting three weeks ago. Okay, so we were stuck with having to bring up a couple of sites. Um, we actually were able to bring them up in this infrastructure and meet our contract deadline and not lose money as a result of that. But uh, I'll get to you in just a minute. Okay. Um, but your original question about, you know, is this better or worse? From a, from a security operations perspective, with respect to what uh, the security ops guys have to do in terms of vulnerability remediation, this is, they love this, I, this, whole, this whole concept, because every spinning disk that I take out of the environment is one less disk they have to go mess with in the event there is a, uh, a problem, okay? Um, so, yeah. Well, hang, hang, let me get this cover here. The infrastructure is all, is all redundant, okay? So basically, we have multiple in this, in the pilot infrastructure, we, that's one of the things we checked in the pilot infrastructure is redundancy. How, how do we make this thing redundant? Because yes, you're right. This thing relies heavily on your network. If your network goes down, people don't get to work, okay? Um, it re re require, uh, relies heavily on your data center, right? You lose your data center, smoking whole disaster, people, people are not gonna work. So yeah, we basically built a lot of redundancy in this. So, Essentially, the day, the, this, this entire infrastructure is actually spread between two data centers that were three miles apart. Okay. So even though stuff is, we're using, we use the NetApp storage, so we were using the NetApp um, replication tools to be able to basically snap images across and, and put them in the other data center. We actually failed it over, so we failed from one data center to the other just to make sure that we could actually do it. Um, with respect to backups, um, the user's data is still out on their home directories that we provide them. Okay. The only additional thing we had to worry about backing up was the profile information. It's stored in a separate set of storage, and that's we so their their normal data is backed up using the typical tape backup snapshot that sort of stuff. Their profile information, which was on a different storage array, was then stored over and uh, and, and replicated over to an offsite storage area. Yep. Well, since it's such a small. You know, a small window right now so of just 60 people essentially in, in the pilot. Um, I don't know that that it has at this point. Um, again, the, the idea behind what we've been doing is we haven't noticed any of the of the thin clients have not showed up anywhere in any of the incident re incident reports. Um, and primar it's primarily because it's most of the people who are actually using them are we've got some guys out of our engineering organization that we work with pretty on a pretty regular basis from an IT perspective, and then a lot of there's a lot of, a lot of the guys on the pilot were just IT guys, so guys that typically are a little bit more aware from a security perspective. Yeah. What's the load just put on your both your uh, your local network and your WAN network? Um, local network, it's not much of a load. It's ICA. So, you know, 75 to 150 kilobits per user. And then when you throw the TCX stuff in there, it, it jumps up a little bit, but not much. Um, not, enough to, not enough to notice. Not enough that we decided we need to put, you know, put this behind any kind of a um, QoS type solution. So. And then uh, from the WAN perspective, um, I actually used this system while I was here, okay? Um, I've, got, I've got a, um, this thin client laptop, one gig of flash drive, one gig of RAM in it, you know, wireless and all that jazz, and I can actually log into our wireless infrastructure or into this this infrastructure with this box from pretty much anywhere I can get a wireless signal, um, and uh, and then work in that environment. Um, it depends, you know, on a, on a wireless connection, a choppy network, you know, you'll notice it. It's not, it's um, you know, remotely, it's not as as, as the response is not as quick as doing. Um, being in you know being on the campus where all the hardware is at, but it's uh, it's usable. It's it's very usable. So, okay. So you said that your 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 ICA bandwidth is still like seventy five. Whatever is it, seventy five to hundred or so kilobits per second. Mm -hmm. What is your what is your its resolution and your screen? And I run mine on a twenty four inch display, nineteen twenty by ten eight, whatever. Yeah, twelve hundred some. You know, big. Uh, but again. You know, the video processing is done in the thin client, right? So, uh, you know, you're not really, you're not pulling that much across the screen, you know, across the, across the wire. I see, but you're not doing flash there. I mean, 
No. Now, the, again, the flash is the 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 ICA protocol. The flash, all of the stuff that's that's flash related and USB redirect type things are done on a separate protocol. That's the TCX protocol, that is is proprietary to Wise, and it, there's and there's a component on the on the in the virtual machine that strips grabs that stuff, strips it out, and sends it via a different protocol to the um, uh, to the to the actual thing client itself. The thing client then renders that video. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no problem. I like this better anyway. <laughs> no, but when you do the video, then what is your bandwidth load there? Um, again, depending on what it is, it's it can be um, a couple hundred k. It's okay. not it's not that bad. It doesn't go over a megabit. No, no, uh, -uh yeah. So yeah. Pardon? I'm sorry. Yeah, I I should be doing that. Sorry. Um, for the for the for the audience out there as well. Where'd we leave off? What box were we in? Just go to the next slide. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so what have we learned so far? Well, we thought protocol is critical. Um, we just, we've talked a lot about the protocol. Um, ICA is probably the most mature protocol on the, on the market for doing this thing and does the best job. Um, we did work with RDP for a while and it just doesn't cut the mustard. Um, multimedia redirection is, um, and USB redirection, you gotta have these two things if you don't Again, you you know, you'll, you can't run flash video. Users get really upset when they can't plug a USB drive into the thing client seat on their on their virtual desktop. You know, so you've got to be able to do USB redirection. That those two things came to came via TCX. Um, printer driver management is a problem. Uh, if you've never done anything with this with a Citrix environment, a presentation, a Citrix presentation environment, you know, you got a guy who wants to plug his printer in or wants to print to a printer. You know, there is no universal print driver. And so that's one of the things we've learned is that printer drivers, you know, dealing with printer drivers is going to be a, is going to be a problem, um, as well as offloading, you know, again, an off, offload, offloading the video processing. So. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't claim a paperless office. That doesn't work. Yeah. That's the USB redirection. Um, that's the, the TCX protocol. So yeah, um, yeah, I can I can take uh, again this box here, be on be wired up or be up hooked up through our, our portal that we go through in order to get into the environment. Plug a USB drive in here, and it shows up on my desktop in my uh, in in, well, in it's virtual. Not necessarily connected to the computer, it's connected to the local network, right? That depends. Now, if if it's a local network printer, then the um, the the virtual machines can see all the network printers. Right. Yeah, he'll see every printer that's attached to whatever print servers you have out there. Now, it's, it's the local printer that's the issue. And in our environment, um, management staff is required to have a local printer in their office to do printing of personnel type stuff. They're not allowed to print that on the network printer and then run out and try to grab it before the next guy gets it, right? So we have to solve that printer problem in order to be able to, to for this environment to work. Uh, Running separate uh, images is cost prohibitive. We run a single image. If you get into, you know, now you could probably run two or three different images, or you could run two or three different operating system images if you chose to, but you can't run a separate image for every individual you have in the, in the company. I mean, that's, you're, you might as well go back to a regular fat client, right? There's no point in doing, in doing that. So uh, you, you, know, you have to get to a, down to a single image. Um, if you're gonna use a single image, you have to do application virtualization. Because not every user has to have every application. Licensing would kill you if you put every application into that image and then stream that image out. Plus, that the image starts getting rather big and it takes longer for the client to boot up. So, um, uh, there there are application virtualization integration issues. You have to think about what it is you're going to do when you when you do the application virtualization. If the application has a lot of hooks into other applications, you have to virtualize the package. You cannot just take the single individual application. Um, one example is the, uh, I, use a, I use a tool called OneNote. I had them, at, had them virtualize OneNote separate from my regular desktop, and OneNote runs fine, but it doesn't know anything about the fact that Microsoft Office is there, so I can't use any of the integration between the two. Okay. Um, somebody asked about the, the hypervisor, or the, the mobile user. Um, you can't support a mobile user in this environment. Okay. So when I get on, if, if this is the only machine that I have, when I get on the airplane, I can't do anything with this machine until I get to where I can get 
to a network and get back into the environment.